Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today I'm going to take a look at the Kung Fu Flash cartridge for the Commodore 64. The Kung Fu Flash cartridge is a so-called instant load cartridge for the Commodore 64. It can run all kinds of cartridge images and disk images and also tape images from a little SD card you put on the cartridge. And the great thing about this is that it's fully open source, open hardware, so you can totally make your own. It's not too complex to build. And here's my specimen of this, which Michael built for me quite a while ago. And actually this doesn't have a case or a cartridge shell. So that's the first thing I want to do. I want to put my particular Kung Fu Flash into a shell because it needs to be protected a bit. I've been using this quite a while and I actually broke a little transistor on here uh, at one point that I had to resolder on here, replace that because it just got burned in the process while I was using this. So uh, yeah, putting this into case is definitely a good idea. Kung Fu Flash was actually designed by Kim Jorgensen and uh, there are continuous updates to the firmware. And Kim designed this to go into one of these stumpy cases that are made by The Future Was 8-Bit, which I can highly recommend, uh, like an online seller of all things retro hardware and software. They have lots of nice games that they sell and also things like these cartridge shells, which are super nice because they are shorter than the original Commodore cartridge cases that came for the C64. Uh, the Kung Fu Flash is designed to fit into one of these. So I'm going to use one of these and modify it slightly because we need some cutouts for buttons and things and also for a USB port and an SD card port. You can also buy Kung Fu Flash cartridges that have already been manufactured from the future was 8-bit and they're not that expensive uh, given the amount of stuff you can do with these, which we are going to take a brief look at later in the video. My first step is going to be modifying one of these cartridge shells, stumpy cartridge shells. I'm going to put everything in the description, the links to the, buy these and uh, the GitHub where the hard and software for the Kung Fu Flash is available. So you can make your own or buy one from the Future Was 8-Bit. And I guess there's others who sell these as well. Future Was 8-Bit is just the most uh, prominent and I can recommend them because everything I got from them is of very high quality and works beautifully. And in case you want to make your own Kung Fu Flash, I highly recommend sending the Gerber files to PCBWay.com, my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs, who happen to celebrate their ninth anniversary currently. So there's a lot of coupons and you can get stuff for even more reasonable prices than usual. They also do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, you name it, they can pre-populate your PCBs for you. And PCBWay also happen to be the sponsor for this video, so you can find a link to their website in the video description. I highly recommend checking that out. Back to my Kung Fu Flash adventure. There are many, many color options for these. I have some of my favorite ones out here, uh, some of which I bought. Some of them were provided as free samples from the Future Was 8-Bit, actually. And I think I want to go with the clear one because there is a little LED on the circuit board here, which, if I use the clear case, just shines through the case. I think the ones that uh, the Future Was 8-Bit manufacturers actually have clear buttons here so you can see the LED through the button which is of course more elegant than my hack job which it is probably going to become but that's what I have and I, I like clear cases anyway so as you probably know if you're following my channel here I put many things in clear cases and these are available in clear plastic so I'm going to go with this. We need some cutouts in this. I am going to remove the SD card from this because these things, that's the micro SD and these easily break. I've broken quite a few of these uh, because I wasn't careful. This should just fit in here. These just clip together and there's of course a screw to secure them and this should just fit right in here. We have to do some filing though, because we need some slots to uh, fully fit this in here. And we also have to remove a bit 
of the shell here to fit this USB port. I think the future was 8-bit version doesn't have the USB port populated, but that's not really necessary for general operation of this cartridge. So just a little add-on that you can use, but you don't have to. Also for the future was 8-bit version, they have like little plastic stumps that uh, fit in the cutouts in the cartridge for the uh, production version of the Kung Fu Flash that just push down on these tactile switches here, tactile buttons. Uh, I am probably going to use some uh, higher tactile buttons and re replace these flat ones on here to protrude through the cartridge shell. That's probably the way I am going to accomplish that. We're going to see. This is going to be a bit of tinkering, a bit of filing, a bit of cutting. And then we're going to take a look at the functionality of this. So first thing, we have to cut this uh, standoff thing here because it interferes with our USB port. Just going to remove this completely, I think. There we go. It already fits in here but it doesn't go quite to the bottom. So we are going to have to make some markings and cut out the slots here and here and here and here. And I think I want to use just manual files for that. So I have a nice set of key files here that I'm going to use for this. And I think I'm just going to give it a go, probably using one of these triangular files first, just marking the spots here. Yep. There is actually also a 3D printed case for these. I think in, it's linked in the GitHub. So if you have a 3D printer, you can totally use that. Let's see. This fits in here now, which it does. And we have a nice cutout here, and we have a nice cutout here that we can use our SD card in. And we're going to determine where we have to drill holes for these buttons. Not the most trivial thing in the world, actually. <laughs> So this line seems to be super straight, this one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here. That should be that. I'm going to drill some holes. And we don't need spectacularly large holes, I think I'm going to go with 5 millimeters or something, or 4 millimeters. Yeah, that's 4 millimeters, exactly. So, yeah. I think what I want to do is to drill some 4mm holes in this <laughs> and hope for the best. <laughs> I think I wandered a bit. It doesn't look that straight, unfortunately. <clears throat> As usual, but yeah, good enough, I guess. It's going to be, everything is going to be better than using this without a case, so hopefully going to be fine. We're good, I guess. We're going to see. <laughs> so I'm going to desolder the original tactile switches that are on there and uh, figure out the height of switches we need to make this work through the case. I'm also just washing away my markings that I did with some permanent marker uh, with alcohol. That should work pretty well. And I'm firing up the desoldering station here and try to get these out with maybe a bit of flux added because this probably is lead-free solder. <sighs> Mm. 
Okay, this one's already gone. This one needs a bit of persuasion. There we go. There we go. That wasn't too bad at all. Need some cleaning up maybe with some soda wick. I thought this would be worse. Just cleaning off the rest of the solder here. And then we're going to figure out which size of switches we need. So now we're going to put this back into its shell and place some of these, uh, I got an assortment of various heights. We're going to see which one suits our purpose here best. We can just uh, clip these in basically. This is a bit too low, I think. Yep. Yeah, that works pretty well, actually. I think this is the height I want to go with. I'm going to test fit these here. You can't get them in the wrong way. They're just uh, closing, basically. And they thankfully clip into the PCB a bit. Yeah, but that seems to do the trick. So they are protruding like a millimeter, I think. I'm going to solder this in. Let's see if it fits. Doesn't look as beautiful as I had imagined, but yeah, we have the cutouts in the correct positions. We can use our SD card slot and we can also use our USB slot and our buttons. are accessible through the case, which is what I was after. So yeah, I call this a success, even though uh, the whole placement is not very good. Uh, in the end, with this clear case, we don't even need a label because you can clearly see the Kung Fu flash through there. And we should be able to see the LED through there, which is nice, kind of a nice feature. Yeah, I'm going to put the screw in and call this a finished product. And of course it looks awesome in the clear case. <laughs> and there we go, that's my Kung Fu Flash, which does look pretty awesome, even though I messed up the spacing of it. <laughs> but hey, it's a handmade product, so uh, I'm not too worried about that. And I am the one who's going to look at this for the most part. Probably you are going to see it in some video, in the future, but yeah, it's definitely better than just using the bare circuit board all the time. As I said, I blew a transistor on there, doing that for too long. <laughs> and now we're going to take a look at what this thing can actually do. It can do quite a few things, so let's have a look. Quite fittingly, I am going to use my clear C64C case. Uh, this actually has a 60 clone board in it that I made myself or built myself and replacement chips. Uh, I made a couple of videos about this if you're interested in that. I put the Kung Fu Flash in here and the first thing I am going to show you, because I neglected that part of the Kung Fu Flash, I am going to show you how to update the firmware on here. Updating the firmware is basically just a matter of copying the firmware file from the GitHub that you can just download there onto the little micro SD Starting up the cartridge, you just go into this beautiful menu, find the file, the update file, upd file, which in my case is just in the root directory here, Kung Fu Flash version 1.44. As you can see in the bottom there, I'm currently on 1.29. And we're going to select this with the cursor keys or with the joystick and just uh, hit return or the fire button and we can upgrade the firmware. There we go. And now we are on version 1.44, which has a couple of bug fixes and improvements. So that's upgrading the firmware. That's uh, how easy it is. And the Kung Fu Flash is actually designed to be super easy to use. You can use the joystick to navigate these menus. I have a Competition Pro in port two. 
we can enter subdirectories that are on the SD card. We can just start stuff by hitting return or the fire button. There is a little help. This is basically everything you can do. It's very limited, but it still can do a lot of things. And it even has a Commodore 128 mode now and things like that. We can do various settings. We can set this to another drive number. It has its limitations that we're going to go through pretty quickly now. I'm basically just going to read you the feature list from the GitHub here. Uh, the Kung Fu Flash can emulate different cartridge types. That's actually the main purpose of this. It can also load PRG files, just single file software for the C64. And it can use D64 files, which is a bit limited because it doesn't support software fast loaders and things like that or not many of them at least. So the D64 support is limited. It does do very well on a number of cartridge formats and it also does really well with PRG files, single file games, for example, or other software that you can load. And it's actually super quick with uh, loading single file stuff as I'm going to show you. We can load uh, tape files as well. T64 is supported. TAP is not supported as of yet, I think. There's quite a few things that this can easily do. And it's just instantly loading PRG files, just uh, putting them into memory from the cartridge. It literally just takes the amount of time it takes to read from the SD card. So the Kung Fu Flash does support a lot of different cartridge files. That's why it has these three buttons. Basically the rightmost button is a regular reset button. The button in the center here is the menu button you use to enter the cartridge menu, the Kung Fu Flash menu. And then there's this button on the left, which is actually a special button that is used to access freezer cartridges and things like that. So you can just load a cartridge, for example, the final cartridge or the action replay and use the freezer from that cartridge as if it was the real thing inserted in your Commodore 64. It does support all generic cartridge types like 8K, 16K cartridges and Ultimax cartridges. It does action replay 4, 5 and 6. It works with images of the KCS power cartridge type. It does support the Final Cartridge 3 and the Final Cartridge 3 Plus, which is an enhanced version of the original Final Cartridge 3. It does support Simon's Basic, uh, Fun Play, Power Play, Super Games, Ocean Type 1, Epic's Fast Load, C64 Game System, so C64 GS. It does support Warp Speed, Dynamic, Saxon and Super Saxon. It does support Magic Desk, Domark and HES Australia cartridges, Super Snapshot version 5, Komal. Easy Flash cartridges, which is a huge thing because all the Easy Flash stuff that works on the Easy Flash, basically everything that is made for the Easy Flash also works on the Kung Fu Flash, which was derived from the Easy Flash cartridge, which is also an excellent card, by the way. And you can actually use the USB port that's on here with a slightly modified version of the Easy Flash software to transfer stuff from your PC to the Kung Fu Flash, which is a feature that's not really that necessary if you have an SD card reader on your PC anyway. But uh, you can, in theory, hook up a USB cable and run the software on your PC and then make an Easy Flash cartridge out of this basically and use it as an Easy Flash. It also supports Profit 64, which is a synthesizer cartridge, I think. It does support Freeze Frame, which is an early freezer cartridge, Freeze Machine, another freezer cartridge, PageFox, which is a huge thing that's a desktop publishing software that was pretty popular back in the day and pretty powerful for the C64. It does support RGCD cartridges and the Hucky cartridge, which is a special cartridge format that a tinkerer made at home, Hucky. <laughs> it supports Dream cartridges and it also supports general C128 cartridges and also warp speed 128. File types it supports are CRT, obviously cartridge files that are the same files you would use in an emulator. 
uh, C128 external function ROMs, ROM and binary files, which you can use on your C128. Disk images D64, D71 and D81 are supported. As I said, fast loader support is not that sophisticated. So many things that use software fast loaders are not going to work properly, unfortunately. But that's due to the limited disk drive support. So this is not a cycle exact emulation of a real disk drive, unlike other cartridges like the uh, 1541 Ultimate. But it does basic support of D64s, D71s and D81s. It does support tape images, T64s. Uh, TAP images are not supported, as I said. Program files like PRG and P00. And it does support, obviously, as we've seen, uh, firmware update files. So that's basically what this thing can do and support. So basically this is super versatile, but there are some limitations. Uh, most prominently the uh, lack of support for software fast loaders on disk images. But there are many versions of disk images with fast loaders removed and stuff because the SD2 IEC, which is also very popular uh, disk drive emulation hardware for the Commodore 64, doesn't support that many software-based fast loaders either. So there are versions of things, popular games and stuff that you can find online that do work on the Kung Fu Flash. And all the single file stuff I tried works no problems whatsoever. Most cartridge formats are supported, even larger cartridges like the Ocean format and stuff like that. And the menu structure is super easy uh, to navigate. These two dots bring you to the uh, parent directory basically and you can just choose directories and start stuff by hitting return or the fire button on your joystick. There are some other limitations. The Kung Fu Flash doesn't work equally as well on every Commodore 64 model because there are slight variations in timings and things like that which are very difficult to replicate with a uh, modern chip like the one that is on the Kung Fu Flash. There are some settings you can try to make up for that. Particularly this has problems with some NTSC models of the Commodore 64 and especially with uh, later models like the C64C ones with the short boards. But there are workarounds for that and you can set the timings a bit in the latest firmware. That's a pretty new feature, so I haven't tried that at all as of yet. Obviously you can go into basic and use this as a regular C64 and we have our regular basic prompt here. And you can of course hook up a drive, a real life disk drive and uh, have a fast loader cartridge like for example uh, the final cartridge just booted up here that is instantly loaded here. We can just go into basic and we have the functionality of the full functionality basically uh, we can use the freezer as well as you can see of the final cartridge which is pretty remarkable so uh, that that is super useful another thing that is super uh, useful is that you can set this up in a way that's actually the standard configuration i believe that this just starts with the last thing that was loaded on here so you can just set this up like I just did, power cycle the C64 and have the final cartridge just boot up as if it was a real final cartridge. You can do the same with, uh, for example, diagnostics cartridges. So you can use this as every diagnostics cartridge you can possibly dream of by just uh, starting it up on a working C64 with the diagnostics, uh, setting it up to start up with that cartridge and uh, starting it up in the broken C64 or the C64 you want to test. Yeah, that's pretty pretty cool actually and super useful. And best of all, obviously this is all open source and you can make your own pretty easily. You can just order PCBs, you can uh, get some of those stumpy cartridges or 3D print a cartridge shell for this. The instructions in the GitHub are super clear and everything is laid out there. There is, of course, a bill of materials. It's not super expensive to make. I can highly recommend this as an inexpensive, pretty much all around solution for quickly loading stuff from modern media into the C64. I used this a lot 
as I said in the beginning, I, even to the extent that I broke it. But uh, now it is fixed and I have it in a shell and hopefully I'm not going to break it again. That pretty much concludes what I want to say about the Kung Fu Flash. As I said, I can recommend it as a cost-effective solution which gives you a lot of functionality for the good old 64. And uh, here's the uh, Last Ninja Remix, which is a System 3 cartridge file, which also works flawlessly. I think that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was informative. If you want to make your own or get one, the links are in the video description. Special thanks go out to all my supporters on Patreon and on the YouTube channel memberships page and also on Ko-fi. The links to that are also in the video description in case you want to give me some support, which would be highly appreciated, obviously. That's it. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.